In this lecture, we're going to be looking at circles. We want to learn how to graph a circle, and we want to know how to work with the equation of a circle. We're actually going to be going both directions. We're going to be asked to graph given an equation, and if we know the circle, can we come up with the equation itself? Okay. So first of all, we've got to make sure that we're all on the same page and understand what is a circle. So we have the general concept. I think everybody knows intuitively what an encircle is, but uh, mathematically speaking, what do we mean by a circle? A circle is a set of points, and it's a point in, it's points in the plane that are a fixed distance r from some fixed point hk. So imagine that you've got a point out here whose coordinates are h comma k, right? So you're in a coordinate system, and you have some distance away from there that you want to go call that distance r, then the circle is the set of all points that you get by staying that distance away from h comma k. And I am drawing this freehand, so I apologize for the uh, roughness of my circle. But that distance from the center to the edge of the circle is actually called the radius. And then the fixed point in the middle, we are going to refer to from this point on as the center of that circle. And it's not too hard to see how to find the equation for this circle, because all you got to do is think of any point on the outside of, here, of this um, circle and know that the distance between that some point, which let's say we label it x comma y, and the point at the center, we know the distance between them is r. And we have a distance formula that we covered in an earlier lecture. r is equal to the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. All you have to do now is square both sides of this, r squared equals, and then squaring cancels out to that square root, you have this equation. Well, h and k are going to be fixed numbers within the problem, so it's r, but x and y now are your variables because that equation here is true no matter where you are on the circle. So the way that we'll write this is I'll just flip this equation around and write it as x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the standard form of the equation of the circle. So if you are given a center, as we are in this example, and we're given a radius, we can use that and just plug those numbers straight in. In this case, since we have negative 2 comma 1, h is negative 2, k would be 1, and over here it tells us that the radius is 4. If we plug all of those into my standard form, what I end up with is x minus a negative 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 4 squared. Now we'll want to go ahead and simplify this one step further. That's x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 16, 4 squared. That right there is the equation of the circle described in that example. We can also go the other direction and take an equation and use it to graph the circle. Since we know that the form for the general equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, this actually fits that form once you recognize that this is the same thing as x minus a zero squared. So if you ever see just an x squared without any other x terms or constant terms, nothing subtracted from it, that means you can write it as x minus zero squared. Okay, which tells me from this that h is 0 in this equation and y is 1. Now, why is it not negative 1? Think about that for a second. Well, if you look at the general form, it actually has a negative in it. So the negative here is part of the form, and it is the number without the negative that is the actual k. And I don't know why I wrote y, but I meant k. Okay. And r, since the right-hand side is actually r squared, remember to be careful about this, that means r is the square root of that side, or 1. Now, with this information, we have enough to graph our circle. So I'm going to draw an x and a y axis, or y and an x axis. I'm going to go to the point 0, 1, which is right here. And then I'm going to draw a circle whose radius is 1. Now, the easiest way to do that is to just go out this radius in... Um, four different directions and get the best circle you can. So since this is my length one here, I'm going to have a point here, 
point here, a point up here at two zero or zero two, and a point over here. And so my circle would connect those points. Okay, and there we go. Now in this problem we have uh, an issue, right? Because this is not written in the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. What we need to do is somehow convert to this form. And the reason I know it's not in this form is because notice I've got x squared and an x term. I've got a y squared and a y term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an old technique called complete the square, something that you'll have learned in an algebra course somewhere along the way. So what do I mean by complete the square? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put the x's together, so x squared minus 6x, and then leave a space. And then you're going to put the y terms together, so y squared plus 2y, and then leave a space. Put a plus here, plus here. And then what we're going to do is going to take this and move him to the other side. Okay? So makes that a minus 9 over there. All right. So what am I doing? I'm going to take this now and I'm going to take half of this and then I'm going to square it. So what's half of negative 6? Negative 6, take half of that. That's basically dividing it by 2. You get negative 3, right? And then take negative 3 and then square it, you get 9. That's, I'm going to stick that right there, 9. But if I add it to one side, I have to add it to the other so that the equation is the same equation. Let's do that again. What's half of 2? That gives me a 1. And take 1 and square it, I get 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Now why did I do that? Because the result now is if you were to factor x squared minus 6x plus 9, what you get is x minus 3 squared. And a shortcut is that this half of the middle term is always the number that's the second term in your binomial. But if you factor this, go back the old-fashioned way and factor, you'd get x and a x and a minus 3 and a minus 3 to get the minus 6 in the middle and multiply together to give you 9. And of course that is x minus 3 squared. And if you take the second one, you factor it, you get y plus 1 squared. And on the right-hand side, just add up what you got. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0, plus 1 makes 1. And aha, it is in our standard form for the equation of the circle, where h is 3, k is... Now, what is k? k is not 1, because you have to have a minus there. This is minus a minus 1, so really k is negative 1. Just remember that every time you see this binomial squared, it's the opposite of that second term that gives you the k and the h. And then, of course, r is going to be the square root of the right-hand side, or 1. So we have a center, and we have a radius, so we can go and graph those. Go over 3 to the right and down 1 and go a distance 1 in every direction and draw your circle something to that effect. There is our graph of that circle. For our last problem we are asked to find the equation for a Ferris wheel. The original Ferris wheel was built in 1893 in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by bridge builder George W. Ferris, hence the name. The Ferris wheel was originally built for the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago, but was also later reconstructed for the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis. It had a maximum height of 264 feet and a wheel diameter of 250 feet. Find an equation for the wheel if the center of the wheel is on the y-axis. Now why would we want to find the equation of a uh, Ferris wheel? Well, you never know what kind of analysis you can do once you have the equation for that Ferris wheel. You can find points on that, you can graph it on a graphing calculator or in some other computer program. 
So we want to be able to know what is the actual equation of the Ferris wheel. The information we're given is that we're going to put the Ferris wheel on the y-axis. Right? And let's put the ground at ground level. Let's put the x-axis at ground level. And what we know is that the maximum height of the Ferris wheel is 264 feet. We also know that the distance around the Ferris wheel is how much? It's 250 feet, which means it doesn't go all the way to the ground. In fact, you can tell exactly how high it's going to be. If we know that the diameter here is 250 feet, there's my Ferris wheel, then we know that this bottom height is 14 feet, right? So the question is, can we find the equation? To find the equation, remember you got to know h and k, which happen to be the coordinates of the center. We know that r is, uh, in fact, do we know r? We know the diameter is 250, which means r is 125. So we've got that part, 125. But now the question is, what's the h and what's the k? Well, h is easy. h is 0 because we are on the y-axis. What is K going to be? What is the center of this? How high is it? Well, we know since the radius now is 125, then you take 125 plus the 14, that it is above the ground at the bottom, and you get 139. Plugging all that in, you end up with X minus 0 squared plus Y minus 139 squared is equal to 125 squared, or x squared plus y minus 139 squared is equal to, and plugging into my calculator, which I did earlier, I get 15,625. And there is the equation of the first Ferris wheel. And that is the end of lecture three.